Hello, friends, and welcome to Bible study. Um, we are, well, welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land, and this is Bible study. We are in the Niv. Yeah, and I know people have a lot of reactions to that. It's just one version. When I get all the way through this one, I'll do another one. The idea is to compare them to each other. To compare them to each other, I have to read them. And we are in Matthew. We are in Gen chapter 26, which we are going to do all of chapter uh, 26, um, which is till verse 75. So let's get started. The plot against Jesus. First, uh, chapter 26, verse 1. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is in two days. And the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. Okay, so they put forethought into their murder plans. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Well, Jesus was in Bethany in the home of the man known as Simon the leper. A woman came to him with an alabaster jar of expensive perfume, which she poured on his head while he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this, per poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in the memory of her. And obviously true, because she's in the Bible. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted for him 30 silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. So Jesus, Judas had to scheme some first. He didn't initially have a plan about how he was going to do it. And he was prepaid for what he did because he did it with intention. The Lord's Supper. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, also called Passover, uh, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to pre make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Perfectly reasonable question. Where are we hosting this holiday? Most of us are probably asking those kinds of questions right now if they don't already have figured out their Thanksgiving plans. Um, Passover. Um, I've attended many of a Passover. Uh, Passover is on a monthly, uh, like a moon calendar, not necessarily a soul calendar, which is why it's not always in the same uh, thing, same date. And since Passover moves, Easter moves. Those two things are still together. He replied, it's uh, verse 18. He replied, go to the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them and prepared the Passover. When the evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say uh, to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. 
Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. And the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him to have not have been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. Or uh, you yourself have said it. So those are two different things. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, take and eat this, my body. One second. Sorry about that. I wanted to grab my notepad real quick. Um, and let me just jump back into, into this because it's already long. I needed to note down certain passages. Uh, I have uh, somebody uh, preparing uh, for baptism next year. So whenever I'm doing any kind of Bible study, if I note certain passages I want the, them to read, uh, I'm, you know, I'm writing it down because it's part of their Bible study. And this right here is what we do um, when we do communion, or at least a version of it. Uh, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it and eat it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant or in some manuscripts, the new covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When he, they had sung a hymn, they went out They went out to the Mount of Olives. Okay, so Jesus is, predicts Peter's denial. Verse 31. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. See, uh, Zechariah. 13, 7. Uh, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter then, uh, Peter replied, even if we all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I had to die with you, I will never disown you. All of the other disciples said the same. 